Well, hey, everybody. I am so excited to be here today and uh, finally bring on this guy who has been my mentor. He's been uh, the guy that we all follow for, for just the real skinny on what is happening in sync licensing. Uh, Jesse Josephson, man, how are you doing? Thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you, Eric. I'm doing great, man. It's really good to be on your channel. Congrats on your passing 3,000 subscribers. Uh, I remember when I first passed 3,000, it was just a huge, huge moment. So, man, I'm, I'm cheering for you, rooting for you. So, And you put out great content, man, so keep it up. Well, thank you. Well, and, and what's funny is I realized yesterday morning, I was like waking up and I was like, you know, it seems like it's been a year since I put my first video up, to, like, uh, like to the day. And that turned out, and it was, it was a one year ago yesterday that I put my first video up called six ways to make music income. And I think I, I talked about everybody in that video, including you. And, uh, in the, and the, my whole goal was to, to make it, uh, something that would just be my experience. I, I didn't really have, I didn't have any thoughts of it growing into any big thing. I had tried a YouTube channel before, but it just kind of caught on. And, you know, I think uh, a lot of people were very helpful in the, in the growth of it. And you are certainly one of those because I you uh, were kind enough to let me on your channel uh, at one point. And we so let me just ask you first the question I ask everybody on this channel. It's kind of the thing that we do with all guests. And that is, how do you make music income in 2022? Well, I still earn my sync royalties, actually. So I got started in this business a long time ago, 2008. And I basically have stopped submitting new music for the last, I'd say, about two years now. Um, but the cool thing about this business is you got passive income. So actually, every quarter since I stopped, sort of, I guess you'd call it a mini retirement. I don't know if I'm fully done, but for now I am. And you still earn income, and I still get actually new placements, and I still am earning the royalties from any of the placements that have been just continuously airing since they got placed whenever they got placed. So that's still been going on in the background, which is really cool. Uh, but obviously, primarily now, I'll sync my music is my education platform so that's my primary source of income now so basically between those two um i'm luckily and, and very thankfully able to uh, pay my bills so i think of myself as a composer slash educator and composer comes first on purpose um how do you think of yourself in those two in those things are you still do you still think musically and focus or is, is the channel and the information you want to provide more of a focus it's think? a really good question i don't i don't really know if i really have a particular like i'm first this then that i think my brain works more in terms of i crave challenges and so if it's a music project and it's challenging to me and exciting like I'm all on board. And mm -hmm. if it's teaching other people how to do this and creating like a YouTube channel or putting together, you know, the platforms that I put together and it's like, well, how do you do that? I don't know. And it's like exciting to me to see this kind of puzzle form in front of me. I just get really excited by that thing. And, I, and that kind of explains, I know some people might want to know, like, why would you stop sending, sending music to libraries? Well, you, you guys, m most of you guys watching this video, you're probably new into the sync licensing business. And so your excitement, enthusiasm for the industry is probably at its highest. And it's great. I don't want to be the wet blanket for any of you guys. But as you get into the industry for years and years and years, um, getting placements on TV shows becomes your new normal. It's, it's not actually new and exciting anymore. It's just kind of what you have been doing for many years and you kind of expect it. And it's still a great, wonderful thing to be grateful for. But my brain, for whatever reason, it is wired to crave novelty. It just wants something new to tackle. And I felt after, let's see, that was 10, 12 years or so. Yeah, about 12 years of doing it. You know, the novelty sort of wore off, the excitement of it was wearing off, and I was actually more uh, passionate and excited about teaching and being yeah. a part of the Sync My Music, you know, whatever it is, the endeavor that this thing is, and doing YouTube videos and talking to people and just, and also now sort of seeing, you know, almost living vicariously through the new uh, members and saying, and seeing how excited they were to get their first placements or first acceptances. And it kind of brings me back to that first feeling I had. So I don't know, my, my craving for novelty and a new challenge really is being um, uh, satisfied by Sync My Music much more than it was for producing music now. Maybe at some point I'll go back to that but for now um, I guess you could call myself more of an educator than a producer because I really don't produce that much music these days and when you did produce music it sounds like you felt you were like more of a producer than a composer I mean when I watch your channel and I and I I, I think of you 
making music, you are making it almost for a absolute focused purpose. In other words, you're, you, you're not just sitting there. Oh, I, I just got, I just really want to create some rock today because it's, it's stirring my soul. You're like, okay, no, this person, this library needs this thing. And that's really what I want to focus on. Is that kind of what you think? Totally. And I think what some people might see that as a limiting sort of approach to creating music, which is like, wow, you're letting somebody else tell you how to get in the mood for a particular style. But for my brain, it actually helps a lot because I need focus. Like if I don't have the reins on, like I'll wander and I will be in 18 different genres at once and it'll be a complete mess. And I'll be searching through thousands of different sins to find the perfect one. So yeah. when you give me the restraints and say it needs to be rock, it needs to have this kind of a riff, it needs to be this tempo, it needs to blah, blah, blah. I actually find that really liberating because I can then just focus on making high quality music and I don't have to make any of those other choices. They've all been made for me. So I think that's why I've said to many producers on my channel for sure is, you know, sync licensing has, you, you have to like fit into that. Whatever that is, it has to work for you because for many producers, artists, composers, uh, -uh they don't want mm -hmm. any restraints. That is totally just harsh in their mellow and they don't want anything to do with that so if that's you then definitely sync licensing is not going to be a good fit for you because that's what you're going to be asked to do every single day all day and i think you guys know that uh, you know a lot of the stuff that i send to sync libraries is stuff that i took a while to do because i really wanted to do it my way and do what i wanted but yet also please the library so writing the briefs is a whole different thing writing fo focused briefs i i can do and i do all the time but it's i wouldn't say i enjoy it and so in that way i may not make as much as the next guy um it my sync career may only be what i want to make so that's just going to be the way it is versus yours or other people who are really focused because being a producer does not mean being a composer or an artistic person all the time a lot of times it means you just need to produce what the client needs and you need to shut up and it's not about you and that's the thing i try to when i try to talk about any kind of music for others or me, making music income for clients i talk about it's not about you and i think you do that too quite a bit yeah, it's a service industry, right? We, we've probably talked mm -hmm. about that ad nauseum at this point. And hey, we can't talk about it enough. If you're not serving someone, even with this channel or with um, with your music, it's it's not what's it for. You're just absolutely. I wanted to dive in because you you mentioned this in some of the questions we might want to talk about today and the idea between you know, art and business in terms of like, mm -hmm. and where do I see myself in terms of, am I really more an artist or am I more of like a business person kind of thing? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to dive into that because I think that, you know, this concept of, you know, some, let's say there's this, I think, belief that like, well, either you can sell out and have to serve somebody by basically, you know, bowing down to whatever they need and creating whatever they want, or you can be an original artist that just completely floods the market with your absolute original inspiration, which obviously <laughs> in those two choices, one sounds a lot better than the other. But I, I have a little pushback on that because I, I challenge you to, to show me a artist, I'm sure there are some out there, but a popular artist that's actually made a living for themselves and actually been on the map, who didn't have some consideration that this music needs to be digestible by the fans, <laughs> right? Because these days, if I do create music, it is actually more for my therapy, my mental health than it is. Obviously, I'm not going to be releasing any of it. It's really just about if I'm going through something difficult, like putting putting it to music and words and lyrics just helps me process it. But that is not for the world to consume. And that really is more of an artistic, therapeutic kind of process. And some artists can infuse some of their original thoughts and emotions. But you better believe they're talking about verse one, chorus one, verse mm -hmm. two, chorus. Why are they using the words like that? Why aren't they just... I just feel like yelling for eight minutes. And like I said, there, there's exceptions to the rule. There are going to be some of those bands that have those 10 minute long, you know, fart session, essentially. And those are great. And those are awesome. But the, the music that's enriching people's lives, there's still a service mindset there. There's still a consideration of like, I want people to like this. There's not a just complete selfish, ugh, you know, a vomiting of what you want. Yeah. There's still this little bit of like, give me a little bit of the reins. Like, you know, two to three minutes is about where I want this song to be. So I do think that like everybody who's finding some success in the music business and whatever, you know, part of it they find success in, there's still an element of service that's built into it. So I think we just need to 
you know, essentially mature, grow up a little bit and realize that's the, that's the big boy world here is that we have to be useful to somebody else if we expect anybody to give them, give us their time or attention or money, right? Where is Sync My Music as a company now? Do you feel like it is growing? Do you have a game plan? Is there more? I mean, I, I know lately you have really been really focused on trying to get back to the basics a little bit, especially to people who don't know um, who you are or what Sync My Music does. And that's one of the reasons I want to do this interview now is to kind of be part of that um, a little bit. It's also happening during my little celebration, one year celebration week. So that's great. But from the beginning of my very first video, you go into the description and it lists the people that they need to go see for certain things. And for Sync Music, it was it was you, my man. I still think Sync My Music is, everybody talks about this guy, that guy. I still think Sync My Music is the most straightforward place that people need to be coming to get information. I mean, do you see this as growing, as moving forward as your next 10 years or whatever? That's that's awesome. I appreciate the kind words too. That's actually exactly what I wanted to become was just a straight shooting, complete A to Z on how to do well on this side of business. So that's really cool to hear you say that, man. Um, I don't have really a 10-year plan. I don't really have a five-year plan. I definitely am not going to be shutting it down anytime soon. I know that for sure. I'm loving it too much. It's too much fun. Um, you know, I, I will get burned out here and there for sure. Just like with any job, there'll be times where it's like, oh, the customer service is just bogging me down or, you mm -hmm. know, there's issues or there's tech problems, whatever. So I don't really know. I mean, I really felt like in 2020, I had a really, a lot of growth actually happened for the company in 2020. And I think obviously the pandemic played a lot into that. 2021 um, and into the beginning of this year, I felt like things really sort of stabled and stabilized and kind of slowed down a little bit. I actually was just not seeing a lot of new energy and excitement and that kind of a thing. Um, and then now, just actually in the last couple of months, probably as a result of a lot of these new videos I'm putting out um, and just kind of, and the reason why I was doing that is because I've, I'm, I've been guilty of preaching to the choir. And what I mean by that is that like, I'll, I'll put out a lot of videos where I'm using sync licensing terms, talking about what happens in this industry. And if you don't already have some basic understanding and education about this business, you probably are like, I don't know what he's talking about, right? And even really simple stuff like what is a PRO? What is a music library, right? What is the TV film sync licensing? So we're like really going down to the basics. So I just wanted to commit myself for at least a few months to put out some, you know, kind of newbie content, essentially like welcome. You know, I want to basically expose this to you. Here's what it's about. If you want to learn more, you know, there's a free course that I offer. There's obviously, you know, I think 800 something YouTube videos now, plenty to search through there. Um, but in terms of the future of the business, man, I really don't know. I don't have any plans to like sell it or to stop it or anything like that. So I'm just going to keep going with it for now. Um, and I do want to constantly kind of reinvent it. I think one thing that I find uh, going back to my, you know, previous thought on this is that I need to have a new challenge in my life. And even in this business, I will get stuck. I will get sort of like stale after a while of like, well, okay, it's working. You know, things are working. People are finding success. The the platforms are working. The YouTube channel is growing and that, that becomes normal. So my brain goes, well, this is kind of boring. You know, we got to do something else. So, you know, I, I launched this new service called pro feedback earlier this year. And that was actually part of that craving of like, I need to do something different. I need to kind of inject a little bit more energy into my sort of platforms and into my business. And so you can guarantee I'll be doing that from time to time, just something. It might not be a new service, but just some new series or some new something that just gets my blood boiling. Because if I'm not excited and having fun with this and I'm doing it wrong, that's really my philosophy in life. I have to find a way to reinvigorate myself and make it fun for myself.